Hello, hello, everyone. We are back with another episode of Fresh Off the Set. I'm Laura Murray, and I am so excited about our guest today. Actually, excited may be an understatement. Here with me is the Ring King himself. You have seen him on Shark Tank. Tristan Ikaika is here with us. Tristan, thanks so much for coming in. Yes, thank you for having me. It's good to be back. Like I said, I am over the moon that you are back here. So excited to talk to you a little more. And like you said, you are back. We had you on our show Mm -hmm. and three minutes just wasn't enough. No, it wasn't. I I needed more. (laughs) We needed more. (laughs) We needed more, Tristan. That's why we brought you back. So Tristan, you have had so much going on. Let's talk about your company. Let's talk about how the Ring King himself, let's talk about how it got started. Yeah, so it's been a wild journey this last couple of weeks, but it all goes back to when I was like 12 years old, mm-hmm. saw a family friend with the spoon ring, thought mm-hmm. it was so cool. So literally went into my mom's drawer and took one of hers, didn't ask, and just took it <laughs> into the garage. Right, I'm taking this, mom. Like, well, this is cool. I'll, I'll use it. Um, and just took it into the garage and beat it into a ring. And that was really the beginning of the rings, wore them for years. And then the business started when I was 19. I was fresh out of high school. Mm-hmm. And someone's like, does anyone know where he gets his rings? And that's kind of when the business was born. I love that. So you were wearing them since you were 12. I'm sure they got yeah. noticed. Were people coming up to you and trying to get them? And you were like, no, these are just my thing. Yeah, like <laughs> all through junior high, my friends are like, I want that, I want that. Or they would like steal them and they'd like get passed through the friend group. And I'm like, give me my ring back. And people would be like, no, it's mine this week. Like... And everyone was like, you should sell them. But launching a business, I wasn't like, uh-huh. I was big and intimidating and scary. I was like, no, they're just like uh-huh. my thing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I love that. People loved your rings so much. They were literally stealing them from you. Yes. That's when you know you have a good business, Tristan. Yeah, it was, That's when you know. It's actually funny, too. The people I sublease my warehouse space from now, uh-huh. they took my junior prom photos and they, they're like Instagrammers, saw my ring. She's like, oh my gosh, these are so cool. You should sell them. I was like, Thanks, but uh, no. And now I'm selling them out of their warehouse. So it's kind of a full circle moment there. I love that. So you started when you were 19. Was it an instant success? Um, Yes and no. So I was like fresh out of high school trying to uh-huh. figure out what I was doing with my life. It was kind of that weird time where everyone kind of, there's so many options of what oh, you yeah, could we all do. Go through it. Right. And you kind of have a little bit of a crisis for a sec. And I was filming weddings. It was okay money. It was fun, but I wasn't like, it wasn't what I wanted to do. Uh-huh. Um, and I actually had a hard drive crash on me and I was broke out of money. And so I noticed the comment that was like, does anyone know where he gets his rings? So I was like, okay, I'll sell them one time, make some money and then figure out my life again. And that first night I sold out of 155 rings. Tristan, that is insane. And I'm telling you like that was $4,000. And at the time I was like, holy crap, like that's more money than God. Like (laughs) I was just so blown away by it. So I was like, okay, I'll do it again next week. Uh Um, And then next week, and then I was like, okay, I'll see how long this lasts. And four years later, we're still seeing how long it'll last. (laughs) The ring king started his reign. That's what it all began. Yes, I didn't even know at the time. And so you actually sell more than just rings too. You really have a lifestyle brand. What else do you sell? Yeah, so just... This last November, I launched into apparel, which has been super fun and exciting. I have multiple collections and products coming out that I'm super stoked on. And then I'm also launching into other categories that I'm really, really excited about. Highly anticipated. I get so many questions about it already. So I'm excited to, can't say yet, but I'm he's excited just, for what's coming. He's just giving us know? a little tease. All you guys need to know is yes. that Tristan is very excited. And Tristan, I imagine that people look at you, they see what you've done, they see the success you have, and they want to be like you. What are some tips you have for entrepreneurs? It's, I always feel so honored because I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. And people (laughs) are like, oh my gosh, you're so successful. I'm like, thank you. Like it doesn't feel like it most days, but I appreciate it. I would say you just have to throw yourself into it. Like Mm -hmm. I'm lucky in the sense that I didn't think I was launching a big brand. I thought I was just doing it once. So I kind of just went for it and then evolved from there. I think you find the answers as you go through it. And it's just about finding the dead ends. Like, okay, this didn't work. Like, let's try this. Mm -hmm. Okay. This didn't work. Like, let's find this. Okay. Now this worked. Now let's like figure out the next thing. And it really is just like exhausting the opportunities that don't work Mm -hmm. to find what does Mm -hmm. at least is what I found works. And I think also realizing that there's a huge community of people who 
will support you and who actually enjoy supporting other people. I know some people feel competitive and like this and that, but I think it's inspiring to see that there's a community of people who see a 20 year old kid taking his mom's spoons, trying to make a business and they're willing to put steps in place like, Oh, here, do this. It'll help you avoid these 10 steps. Right, right. And I'm just grateful that I do feel supported. And I think that support is out there for everyone. You just have to get involved. I love that. Cause I think so many times people think, Oh, I want to start a business, but I don't know how. And you're saying, just go for it. Yeah. Just Google it. Like talk to someone, call someone, DM people. We, I was talking to a friend the other day, like Utah especially is so cool because you can DM someone and like go to lunch with literally a billionaire. And like, it's not like that everywhere else, but here it's so connected. You're only like two or three people away from literally anyone, I think. I love that. Well, I, lo- I love Utah. So you, you touched yes. a little bit. What are some other reasons that you love our state? I think the community aspect and also that people here aren't afraid to just go for things. Like yeah. everyone's like, everything comes out of Utah. Everyone is from Utah. And I'm like, yeah, because people here, it's like they nur- nurture that. Just the creativity and people pushing boundaries is celebrated. And it's small enough that you can really gain traction, mm-hmm. um, but big enough that the traction goes somewhere. Mm-hmm. I feel like people who, like in LA, for instance, everyone's trying to do something, so it's very saturated. We're right. here, it's still saturated, but enough that your voice is heard. I oh, just I think, think it's the beautiful. coolest place. Your voice is heard, and like you said, there is a community here that maybe isn't everywhere else. Yeah. And speaking of community, honestly, Tristan, your your brand is really a lifestyle brand. Mm-hmm. You posted a story the other day, day that talked about how someone wears your ring and they felt empowered. So your pieces actually make people feel something. Yeah. Is that always your goal? Yeah, for sure. I think it started with the spoon rings and the collections from foreign countries. Like I'd go to Japan and people mm-hmm. would be like, oh my gosh, my parents met in Japan. Or I went to this trip, trip to Japan and it changed my life. And really leaning into that of... Japan is somewhere special for all of us. So like, let's embody that in a collection. And then it just evolved into like my own ring design. So like I have a ring, that's a guy who's crying and it was a time in life where I was crying a lot. And my, like my dad was in the hospital and things were just hard. And I think we kind of talked about it on your show, but people are kind of sick of products. Like you want them to mean something or feel something. And as someone who makes products, I also am sick of just making products. Like, it's only fulfilling if it means something. So I think really sharing that has been special. And yeah, like when I meet people who like the mountain ring, she's like, I feel safe in the mountains. And today I was having the worst day and I looked at it and I was like, you know what? No, I can climb this mountain. Like I'm going to do it to me. That makes it all worth it. Like that's my goal with this. I think that's so beautiful, Tristan, because you are looking at this and it's funny. We just talked about this. You didn't even want to sell your rings. They were so personal to you. Yeah. They were your thing. And now you've stepped out and you're thinking, oh, well, these rings gave me power. These rings empowered me. I want to do that for others. I want to give them not just a product, but really a lifestyle piece. Yeah, something that like they can connect with other people on or connect with themselves on. That that to me is like the authenticity of the emotions into the ring is, I think, why they've had the success they have. I completely agree. And I think they've had the success they have because you are such a rock star. Oh, thank you. We literally call you a king. (laughs) You (laughs) are royalty here in Utah. Let's talk a little bit about what everyone's talking about, your appearance on Shark Tank. Yes. Tell me all the things. It was the craziest thing I've ever done. Were you so nervous? I would have been terrified. I was so terrified. So I auditioned January of 2020. Oh, that was a while ago. Yeah, okay. like two years ago, over two years ago. Yeah. And, you know, it's a huge process to get on uh-huh. the show. Um, I got COVID in um, July of oh, 2020. No. And let's just say it was really bad timing. Um, but luckily, oh, I ended up on season 13. So mm-hmm. I filmed last summer. And the day of, I was out of my body. Like... It was the weirdest thing. Just, is this happening? Is this real life? Like, I'd watched every episode, studied, made flashcards. I was so, thought I was so prepared. And then you're about to walk in there and you're like, what am I doing? Like, what am I doing here? How, <laughs> what's going to happen? I'm going to get wrecked in there. Like, am I the joke? Like, what's happening? Right. Yeah, it was so scary, but so fun. And then you go in there and you, you made it out with an offer. What did that feel like? It was 
the, it literally, I don't know how to describe it besides it felt like I was in a simulation. Like yeah. you walk in and the sharks are all there and it almost feels like they're just like characters and you're in this backdrop yeah. and it's the weirdest feeling and you're talking to them and you're like, I've watched you guys forever. And now yeah. like all of this is going to be on national TV. So I don't want to look stupid. And when, so when Kevin first shot me the offer uh-huh. for 50%, I was like, this is not going how I thought it was going to go. Like, <laughs> this is not um, good. No. <laughs> and I had like studied other brands numbers who were similar to mine. And I thought my valuation was more than safe. Yeah. And I think their big hang up was that I was the whole brand. So it was yeah. kind of a risk there, yeah. which I understand. But once Barbara and him kind of started going at it and like fighting for me, I was like, this I is have insane. Made it. <laughs> yeah. It was the I craziest. I made it. Oh, Tristan, that is so, so awesome. And you know, you did Utah proud. Thank you. You did Utah proud. I know you did your family proud. And speaking of your family, I have to talk about this Mm -hmm. because this is the sweetest thing in the world. It happened a little bit before you went on Shark Tank. Talk to us about what you did for your family. Yeah, so I feel super lucky and blessed. Um, My parents have always been so supportive to me and kind of given their all to be there me in every way that they can well your mom had spoons yeah and like (laughs) even thinking back to like elementary school and junior high like any school project she never was like no don't do that like the crazier thing I want to do she was like okay like what do you need me to do like can I tape cardboard together or like they were always so supportive and kind of going through health issues I think is really hard it kind of gives you a new perspective on life and my family um So it's kind of a complicated story, but right before I filmed Shark Tank, um, Uh I was blessed enough to be able to pay off their home. Tristan, that Um, is straight up amazing. Thank you. Yeah, it was a it was a very humbling feeling. I feel like a lot of people dream of that, um, being able to kind of take care of your parents. And so walking into the bank was really crazy. No one would give me any information. I had to go to like four different branches. I'm like, just please let me do this um, um, without them knowing. And yeah, so I paid off their home and then they didn't know until a couple months ago. But that is, yeah. How, how did they react? How did they react to the fact that their son paid off their home? That is, that is amazing. That is a gift yeah. that is just so many of us wish we could do that, but mm-hmm. you were able to. What was their response like? Yeah, my mom cried. Um, of course, I'm getting was, teary know, right here. It's <laughs> kind of awkward to talk about, but <laughs> yeah, I think my mom texts me and she's like, did you pay off our Wells Fargo this, this, that? And I just responded and I was like, huh, what is that? <laughs> um, you trickster. Because <laughs> I think her parents, like my dad is so kind and so he loves to take care of people. Oh, I met him and he He's is so nice, right? a wonderful man, so sweet. But I think it's like, I don't want to say a pride thing, but you don't, if I would have gone to them and said, I want to pay off your house, my dad would have been very uncomfortable. Like yeah. he would have been like, no, don't do that. Uh-huh. We like, no. So I kind of had to go behind their backs and do it. And yeah, just kind of being able to give them freedom in that sense was very emotional for me. I was like, so like, I never thought stealing a spoon would be able to pay off the same house I stole it from. Um, And yeah, life is just crazy. That is so amazing. I'm over here getting emotional, <laughs> paying off the house that you stole your first spoon yeah. in. Good thing your mom had those spoons. I know. Good thing. <laughs> Hopefully I can replace the, them now. <laughs> I'm sure you can't. You haven't uh, replaced the spoons yet, I mean, Tristan? But literally that drawer is mismatched. All the spoons are mismatched. <laughs> I'm like, we should probably buy like ones that match. I love but. it. So Shark Tank has happened. Yeah. How has this past little bit changed your life? It's been so insane. Like just the opportunities I've had and people I've been able to connect with has been unbelievable. Even the business, I feel like overnight I kind of have a new business and it's like a monster to take on. Some days I'm like, I have a tiger by the tail and it's like turning on me, trying to eat me, (laughs) but we're like trying to tame this. Um, Yeah, it's been like a dream come true. Oh, I love that. What are some people that you have met since this started that you are like, I can't believe this is happening. Yeah, I have a couple collaborations in the works that when one of them reached out, I was like, is this real? Like, I feel like <laughs> this is fake. Um, I can't say who it is, but... It's very shh. 
Yeah, I know. I wish I could. You, I'm like, I never know. I don't have to sign a couple NDAs, but. It, well, we'll um, have to have you back on and then yes, we'll talk about these yes, collabs. I love that. Um, yeah, there's been, I don't know, just everyone I've been able to meet, like both strangers and people who are like well established and connected. It's all so fulfilling. I don't know what the word is. I love, I think fulfilling is a great word. Yeah. So, Tristan, we've talked a little bit about what is next. You have some collabs. What do you hope for your company? So in your wildest dreams, which we have seen have been coming true, uh-huh. what do you dream for your company? Yeah, it's so tricky because it's my name. So it's so closely tied to me. I kind of I would say so. It wasn't <laughs> some days, but I just want to keep making products that fulfill me and also other people and also do collaborations that are with like my idols and companies who I've loved my whole life. Um, that would be an ideal spot for me where we're just working on projects and I'm getting to shoot campaigns and do, I love marketing, being able to do marketing things that just are really pushing boundaries and that people remember and feel a part of and get to more people. And yeah, I love kind of the goal. And like we talked about that a little bit earlier, making people feel a part of something. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why people connect with you. And that is why people love you and people love your brand because you are so kind. I mean, we saw in the month of February, you're giving out Valentine's to people. (laughs) This is so sweet. Um, Tristan, if they're right before we wrap up, if someone's listening, we talked a little bit about tips you have for entrepreneurs. What is something you would say to someone who maybe is having a hard time believing in themselves? I would say like, let yourself feel it. I think on the down days, It's like, no, I need to be doing stuff. Like, I need to be doing this and that. And we're really hard on ourselves. And I think, like, go easy on yourself. It's hard. Um, Take a deep breath. Like, do something you enjoy. Go outside. Go for a walk. Understand that, like, the bad days won't last and that there are things you can do. I always make a list of, okay, these are the problems. Like, I just write it down and get it out of my head. I'm like, okay, here's what I do. You can take yourself out out of it and just look at it as a problem like okay it's not me it's just a problem and I know how to solve problems I'm way more able to like push through them and find solutions once I if I can remove myself it's hard but that's what I found I love that I think that's great advice is not blaming yourself but looking at the problem and tackling that problem head on Tristan we have loved having you the ring king himself your reign is just beginning thank you I've loved being here Love it, love it. Congrats, you made it to the end. If you want to continue to freshen up your day, you can watch us on Fresh Living every weekday on CBS Channel 2 in Utah at 1 o'clock. You can also watch us on our YouTube channel, KUTV Fresh Living, and follow us on social media. We will see you next week.